Hey, Cody Rall here, coming to you from Alaska. Still on my vacation up here visiting my family. And uh, one of the things that I've been able to do while I've been up here is relax a lot. And one of the things that I've picked up in the last couple of years is meditation. I find meditation to be really relaxing, rejuvenating, and just generally awesome overall. Um, my question to you would be, what do you consider meditation is? Do you really have to be up in a mountain in Nepal somewhere in a Buddhist monastery going every three seconds in order to meditate? Or does it simply mean sitting down, quieting your thoughts, dilating your perception, and resonating with the environment around you to achieve a meditative state? Now, I find meditation incredibly relaxing and rejuvenating. And there's been a lot of evidence that it has great, great effects on your health as well. There's a lot of clinical evidence that shows that it's helpful for hypertension, anxiety, insomnia, and a host of other physiological ailments that affect people. I know we use it a lot for people that have PTSD and traumatic brain injury in my line of work, and that it can definitely benefit a lot of people that would be willing to try it. One of the things that people have been looking at in the last couple of years is actually finding the evidence on the molecular basis of what meditation really does. So we know that it has these clinical benefits, but no one's been able to show exactly what exactly is happening on the cellular level to actually make it beneficial. Some work at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School has been looking at actual genetic changes that happen on the molecular scale with meditation. So in order to look at the effects of meditation, researchers took blood levels of people practicing meditative practices every couple of minutes to look at the metabolic changes in the transcriptome of their individual cells. So what is this transcriptome that I'm talking about? We know that each cell in our bodies has our entire genetic code housed in its nucleus. But our day-to-day -day functioning is determined by how this genetic code is read. Influences by the environment, things that we do, stages in our lives, all affect the way that the DNA is read and translated into proteins. Sort of the irony about aging is that our molecular machinery that produces energy, mainly in the mitochondria of each cell, produces molecules that are actually harmful and toxic to the cell that cause aging. Mainly, these are called reactive oxygen species. Now, the cell has different mechanisms in place to protect ourselves from things like the reactive, reactive oxygen species. And it does this by changing expression of the genetic code through what's called the transcriptome. Now, some of the specifics on this. In the genetic profiling of these people that were undergoing practices like meditation, they looked at specific proteins that were being expressed. Ones that were increased in expression include ATP synthase and other regulatory genes on insulin. Now these are very protective for cells and protecting the person from developing obesity, meta metabolic syndrome, hypertension, and other physiological ailments. Certain pathways that lead to cell destruction were downregulated in these people as well. There's a specific protein called necrosis factor cap beta that was significantly reduced, um, leading us to believe that the meditation was very much helping the people that were doing it. Now, one of the take-home points from this study was that people that were more practiced in meditation had both more profound and longer-lasting effects of these transcriptional changes. It kind of goes with common sense that people that have more experience with meditation would have more beneficial effects from the meditation itself. And they actually showed this by looking at the transcriptome on the molecular level. So what am I really talking about here? Well, there's the obvious implications that meditation is going to help you in your physiological health. It'll help you bring down stress levels, keep you healthy, and uh, potentially even increase your lifespan. But a little bit more of a profound level I wanted to talk about the fact that these practices alter your thought patterns. And 
as far as I know, this is one of the first studies that I've come across that shows that being aware of your thought patterns and developing certain practices with your thought patterns literally changes the molecular expression on a genomic level within the cells of your body. What kind of implications does that have? Well, we know that it's healthy to be aware of your thought patterns. A lot of people can develop very negative thought patterns that induce a lot of stress, reduce self-esteem, and generally cause them difficulties throughout life. And this is no longer simply a psychological issue. As we learn more about the brain, the mind, and how it affects the body, we understand that this is actually happening in the physical realm that molecular machinery in your body is literally being affected by your thought patterns. Most people know that the mind is got to be one of the most powerful forces that we're dealing with here, but I think once you take hold and realize the implications that it literally is changing the molecular machinery in your body and that practicing things like meditation and being aware of your thought patterns and having optimism and being thankful and having gratitude really affects your physiological well-being right down to the molecular level. If you really understand that, I think that people can really improve their lives, improve the lives of those around them, and really shoot for the stars and get what they want out of life. So that's what I wanted to talk about today with Tech for Psych. I very appreciate you guys tuning in and leaving comments and uh, let me know what you think. And uh, I hope the rest of your week goes great. And I'll talk to you again sometime soon in upcoming videos.